So when you get under the car, this is what you're likely to see. You have some debris, rust built up on the shackles, and also on the U-bolts. So the first thing I'll do is hit them with a wire brush just to knock the debris off. It'll make the removal of the nuts easier. So we're going to remove the three-quarter inch nuts that are on the U-bolts. First thing you want to do is take your wire brush and get the debris off of the threads. Then you can start with your wrench, impact wrench, socket, or whatever. Let's take this one. We're going to, no, let's take this one. We're going to <clears throat> run it uh, the old 10 turns down, stop, hit it with your uh, oil. I like to use croil. And then we're going to go back and tighten it. And we're going to keep going up and down and up and down, hitting it with oil as we go which will help clean the threads and by the time we're done this thing will spin on and off nice and easy and that's what you want to do so that when it comes time to remove the saddle from the spring these are not going to pose any threat to you you can run them all down to the to the bottom and spin them off When you're working on springs, it's likely you're going to need your big wrenches. The very first wrench, right there, that's your full size half inch. The nut that holds on the main spring is a 15 16 and you need an open end wrench for it. I don't happen to have one. So I'm using the large crescent. This is where we're going to need the 15 16 Over on the other side of the frame here, on the side that you can't see, that's where the open end 15 16 wrench would go that I don't have that. So I'm going to use a large crescent. So let's say you stuck with it and you managed to get the 15 16 uh, bolt backed off as far as you could. This is as far as it'll go because then it hits the frame. So why bother cranking on this thing now? Because once you've got it out of the frame loose like this, it will be an absolute wrestle, bear, big problem to try to get this nut loosened now. This is the old rear shackle from the 64. That, uh, this is the anchor for the rear shackle. After all the years of these rubber pieces being uh, tightly inside the anchor, they don't want to come apart. You can see the old rust traces. <clears throat> so that takes some pretty good leverage to get these things out. We're not going to reuse the shackle anyway because we've got new shackles from Eaton Spring. On the front anchor, this eye bolt was, uh, had bonded itself inside the rubber bushing and in my case I needed an arbor press to get this main bolt out of its bushing.
So it's time to prepare a spring for reassembly. You want to gather together your new pieces from Eaton Detroit. In this case, the uh, shackles <coughs> and your anchors. And the trick will be to ensure that you're reassembling things uh, right side out, so to speak. Here's the front anchor installed. This is as far as I'm going to tighten it. Uh, I'm going to wait until I have the weight of the car on the springs before I tighten these up. Just a good idea that you end up uh, working at about the center of the pivot range for the bushing. So, you know, the nut's on the right side, the nut is on the correct side, and this end is ready to go. Something interesting about these front anchors. The hole spacing here to here is not the same here to here. So it makes a difference whether you install this or it makes a difference if it came off this way or it came off this way. Because with these holes in a different spacing, they cannot be reversed. Both anchors are the same, so you could mix them side for side, but you can't mix them for orientation. That is to say, both anchors, when they have uh, this angle side up, have the same hole spacing up here. This is the receiving area for the front spring anchor. This is what we're trying to get those four bolts to line up. Now, I don't know why Chrysler would do that, but the hole spacing on the top is not the same as the hole spacing on the bottom. So the anchor cannot be reversed. The rear anchor is symmetric, so you don't have to worry about which side is up. And we're going to uh, install the bushings and the shackle. So here is the rear shackle on the driver's spring. You see which side the nuts are on. Did we do it right? It's not a criminal offense or a terrible problem if you assemble these with the nuts on the other side. All you'd have to do, if you are uncomfortable with it, is just take the anchor back off and then flip it. It's not that terribly difficult. Now I've got several 64 Chryslers here. This is a 64. and they all have the nuts on the outside. I just have to look at my 62's and I, they all have the nuts on the inside. With the front anchor finger tight installed all four bolts, now it's time to uh, turn our attention to the rear anchor. Here's the rear shackle installed, just finger tight. When you're threading the bolts back in, 
Uh, this is not the time to be using air wrenches or impact hammers because if anything gets cross threaded you're sunk. Uh, in fact I use a, a quarter inch and if I get any kind of binding I'll address it.